Well, blessings to you and welcome to our service here at St. Mark's Presbyterian Church. If you are visiting this channel, the service, then we'd like to receive you today as a friend. I hope that you all are enjoying your summer so far. Um, the fall, September, will be coming around before we know it. And uh, just as a reminder, we are planning to have our uh, live stream service beginning on September 12th for the September 12th service. Uh, and so you, you can still come to the St. Mark's uh, Toronto.org website and there will be a link. So it'll be different from what, uh, what you'll be viewing right now. Uh, we'll be live streaming and you'll be able to view it uh, in the comfort of your home or wherever you choose to, to view the service. That's the plan so far. So we'll keep you updated uh, as we near that date. But that's the plan so far. Things might change. Um, we're, we're trying to prepare for September 12th. Uh, and so, as I said, we'll, we'll keep you all updated. Uh, and so if you would like to volunteer uh, for the technical aspects, camera work, computer, computer work uh, for the Sunday services, uh, we'd love to hear from you, so you can contact me or Bill McGowan. So that's the plan so far. Uh, and so as we, as we continue to, to live in, this, uh, in these circumstances, in these times, um, we pray for patience, we pray for flexibility and adaptability, uh, and, and we'll, we'll get through all of this. Uh, and so we're here now, ready to worship God, ready to join together as God's body, God's spiritual community. And so we give thanks. Let us prepare to worship God now.
Friends, we are welcome to come before God as God's community this day for the responsive call to worship. Let us gather together in blessed union with our God. We will praise God's holy name continually. Look to God and be radiant. We will never be ashamed for God has delivered us from all our fear. Jesus has promised whoever comes to him will never be hungry. Those who believe in him will never thirst. Let us taste the bread of life in scripture and song. Let us worship God. Amen. Let's begin with our opening hymn number 18, Through All the Changing Scenes of Life. Let's gather our hearts together before God as we pray. Living, giving God, you are the source of all good things, and we give you thanks and praise. In Christ, you give us the bread of life, and we know your care and sustenance for us is beyond measure. O bread of heaven, come down and satisfy our spirits. Come down and fill us with your spirit, for your spirit satisfies like no other. We hunger and thirst for you this morning and long to be nurtured in your love and forgiveness. So we come to this sacred time and place where our hungers are finally and fully satisfied as only your bread can do. 
We will wait and listen for your leading in this hour. Forgiving God, in Christ you promise us new life, but we confess that we prefer to stick to our old ways. We nourish bitterness and anger over disappointments. We find it easy to point our self-righteous finger against others while excusing our own faults and failures. Forgive us for betraying our commitment to gospel love and falling short of your hopes and desires for us. Free us from the captivity of old habits and resentments, and by your grace, renew us to live for love's sake. And so we gather in worship to offer you our praise, our love and loyalty, the best of ourselves, our authentic selves. All that we are and all that we have, we offer to you, our living, giving God. In Jesus' name we pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God is tender-hearted and gracious to all and has forgiven you in Christ Jesus. Trust in God's grace and be kind to one another, forgiving others as God has forgiven you. And may the peace of Christ be with you. Let's join now in the responsive Psalm, number 34, verses 1 to 8. I will bless God always. Praise will continually be on my lips. My soul will boast about God. Let the oppressed hear it and be glad. O oh, glorify God with me and let us exalt God's name together. I saw God who answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to God are radiant. Their faces shall never be ashamed. The poor cried out. God heard them and saved them from the angel of God encamps around those who revere God and delivers them. Taste and see how good God is. Happiness comes to those who take refuge in God. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 35 and then continuing 41 through 51. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven. Jesus answered them, Stop your grumbling. No one can come to me unless drawn by Abba God who sent me, and those I will raise up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They will all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from God comes to me. Not that anyone has seen Abba God, only the one who is from God has seen God. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. 
Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. We give God thanks for this holy reading. Some of us are very particular about the food that we eat. This is especially evident in restaurants where we can be really picky about our food choices. What we eat, how we want it prepared, how it should be presented on the plate to us. As I get older, I find myself becoming more and more picky as well. A few years ago, Esther and I were in Montreal to drop off our daughter in university, and we decided to go to Chinatown for lunch. And we came across a Vietnamese restaurant, and I thought, perfect, we were in the mood for a Vietnamese food. So we ordered our main dishes, and I wanted something kind of particular. I wanted a side of shrimp rolls, a side of shrimp rolls, but not the fried kind. There's, there's basically two kinds, the fried and the unfried. So I didn't want the fried, I wanted the unfried. And so I wanted to confirm with our waiter about these two options to make sure that I would get the unfried. And so I asked, well, is this one unfried or fried? And he said, no, it's, it's fried. And I'm pointing to this one and he goes, and he said, no, this one's fried. Yes, this is not fried. And I was kept pointing and he kept saying the fried or the unfried, not fried. And it was just 30 seconds, 30 seconds of this minor language issue. We went in circles about the fried and not fried. And hilarity ensued. Uh, Meanwhile, Esther was sitting there giggling uncontrollably at this comedic situation. You had to be there really had to be there. But we have specific demands when it comes to our food selections. We can be picky. But we can also be picky after the fact. If you watch Judge Judy, even casually, you might have noticed that she often uses a restaurant illustration to chastise those parties who breach an agreement or contract after they have benefited from the goods or services provided. For example, someone hires a babysitter or you hire a painter to paint your house, and so you decide afterward that you don't like the service that was provided to you. And so you refuse to pay after the job is done. And so Judge Judy usually says, she brings up this illustration, you don't order a steak dinner, proceed to eat the steak, finish it, then decide you didn't like the steak, and then refuse to pay for said steak. But this is what happens, probably more often than we realize. After we've benefited from the food provided to us, we, we grumble and complain. There's some excuse we can come up with to knock it down a few notches. This was Jesus' experience. This is what he found himself involved in. The crowd had what we understand to be a totally satisfying lunch, free of charge. The hunger that they felt was satiated. They were so satisfied and impressed that they wanted to compel Jesus to be their political leader in their rebellion against the Roman government. That's how satiated they were with the food that they had and with Jesus personally. So the people were feeling great. That is until 
Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. They benefited from this meal, this free bread. Now Jesus says, I am the bread of life, the bread from heaven. And it's at this point that the crowd turns on him. They start complaining and grumbling because they thought, wait a minute, this is, this is Jesus. This is the guy whose father we know, whose mother we know. We watched him grow up. We know this guy. We know him. Who does he think he is saying that he's the bread from heaven? They were ready to make him king. And now they totally dismiss him. Jesus presents himself as one from heaven. But the crowd grabs him and pulls him right down to common earth by attaching him to his earthly parents. No, 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 you're not going to proclaim yourself to be heavenly because we know you're stuck right here on earth. You're, uh, you're just like us. You're nothing special. Who do you think you are by saying those things? They just had their bellies gleefully filled to capacity. And because of that, they were quite ready and willing to coronate him on the spot and have him lead them into battle. And now suddenly, suddenly, they accuse him of arrogance and blasphemy and refuse his spiritual invitation. Their self-confidence, their self-confidence prevents them from recognizing the truth that stands right before their eyes. It keeps them from seeing Jesus as the one who can satisfy, truly satisfy their hunger. There's a French word, bourré, which means to stuff, to stuff something or yourself, to be satiated as an eating to fullness. I know that feeling. Maybe you know that feeling as well. You just, you can't move because you're so stuffed. It's believed that this word, bourré, is the source of the English word boredom. And so this might suggest that boredom is the state of being stuffed. An important question for us is, are we just bored Christians stuffed with our comforts and blessings that we find any reason or occasion to criticize find fault, grumble, and complain? This is the process that the crowd went through. French writer George Bernanos wrote a novel called The Diary of a Country Priest, where a young priest talks about his congregation and his times and circumstances. He says this, my parish is bored stiff. No other word for it. The world is eaten up by boredom. You can't see it all at once. It's like dust. You go about and never notice. You breathe it in. You eat and drink it. It is sifted so fine it doesn't even grit on your teeth. But stand still for an instant, and there it is, coating your face and hands. 
To shake off this drizzle of ashes, you must be forever on the go. And so people are always on the go. The world has long been familiar with boredom. But I wonder if man has ever before experienced this contagion, this leprosy of boredom, a shameful form of despair in some way like the fermentation of Christianity in decay. Powerful, powerful words. One pastor wrote, is boredom the picture of the church? Having forgotten the wonder of the Exodus, yet grumbling over the quality of the fellowship meals, over trivialities of worship, anxiety about tight budgets and membership roles, while a world starves for bread and bread, capital B. It's not that there's nothing to do. It's that there's so much to do and we've done it and we are completely filled to capacity. And once we are so satiated, that's when the grumbling and complaining creeps in. We can easily point out the selfishness, entitlement, and blindness of the crowd that turns on Jesus. But it's also, this story is also an indictment against us today, our selfishness, our entitlement, our blindness. When we feel hunger and then we satisfy that hunger, what are we really satisfying? Our pride, ego, self-interest, our need to complain and criticize? Is that really what we're hungering for? What is there deep down that we are gratifying? Are we soothing those things? Jesus calls us to hunger for his path, his mission his heart, his compassion, his mercy. Our world tempts us to hunger for many things, many things that will take us off the path of abundant life and instead lead us down a path of dissatisfaction and complaining. It's for this reason that we need to hunger for the right things. Jesus once said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus shapes and directs our hunger to himself, who is our bread of life but we must allow him to direct us. He is our source, our sustenance by God's grace. And when we hunger for this bread, we will ultimately be satisfied with the gift of his eternal life. Glory be to God. Amen. Let us pray. O God of the way, you are the road we travel and the sign we follow. You are the bread for the journey. Guide us as we follow in your way, reaching out to your beloved world. And when we stray, seek us out and set our feet on the path again and lead us safely home. In the name of Jesus, our companion, we pray. 
Amen. As we reflect upon the things that we hunger for and thirst after, let's offer our hearts fully to God through Christ, the bread of life. Let us sing hymn 190, You Thirsty Ones.
Now let's come together in prayer. Gracious and providing God, we have reflected today on the bread of heaven, the bread of life that you have given us in and through Jesus Christ. We thank you for your love, for how you provide all the things that we genuinely need. We ask that you continue to feed us and move us to feed others. Help us to live the gospel message in all that we do, in our words, our actions, conduct, and our relationships. Giving God, just as you graciously provide for our spiritual nourishment through the word revealed to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, so we bring our needs and the needs of others before you in faith and confidence that you are pleased to hear our prayers. We pray for the nations and peoples of this world, especially for those who are victims of war or want. We lift up your church worldwide and the Presbyterian Church in Canada in particular, that we would remain steadfast in our calling to love, service, compassion, and justice. We especially pray for all the clergy and religious of the church, that they may keep faithful in the midst of discouragement, trying circumstances, and spiritual and emotional challenges of ministry. And now we pray for those who are upon our hearts this day. We offer prayers for Jennifer Ford. May she always know your faithfulness and commitment to her as she follows in Christ's path. We lift up Rona Foucault, rest your abiding spirit upon her to be grounded in faith and love. We lift up Rob Gillingham, may you always grant your sustaining power and presence at all times. We lift up Bart, Victoria, and Elizabeth Graff. Continue to bless and guide the family in your wonderful abundance. And we pray for Helen and Kathleen Grant. Provide your loving care and comfort to them in the grace of your spirit. We live in a time of anxiety, uncertainty, discord, and fear. So easy for us to succumb to all this and forget that you are with us at all times, seeking peace and hope. O oh God, be with us as we journey through life. Nourish us always with your word and sacrament until we reach the goal to which we have been called. We ask all these things through Christ our Savior. Amen. And now as we reflect on giving, giving from our hearts to God and to this ministry, uh, I invite you, if you haven't done so already, to the front of our church website, stmarkstoronto.org, and that'll allow you to make a donation uh, through that donate button. So we thank you for your gifts. Freely we have received, and so now we freely give grace upon grace. Let us express our love and appreciation to God by extending the grace and mercy of God to a world that hungers for gospel love. Let us give.
Let us pray. Loving God, we bring our gifts to you, knowing that you have given yourself for us in Jesus, and we can have life in abundance. Bless these gifts. May they become the source of such abundance in lives we touch through mission and ministry for your sake. Amen. And now as we prepare to leave, uh, let's join together in our final hymn, number 355, Light of the Minds That Know Him. Now go, preserved and called in the name of God who loves us, Christ who sustains us, the Holy Spirit who inspires us, mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Amen. <laughs>